Welcome to Extraterrestrial Reality. You know, I've been receiving a lot more uh, comments from uh, followers. Uh, my, my following has been growing, and I really appreciate that. Uh, I get a lot of uh, mostly, uh, you know, supportive comments, and some comments I get uh, not so supportive. Um, so to all the people out there who listen to my podcast and also watch my YouTube videos, I just want to say I really appreciate, uh, you know, the, your, your input. Uh, anyway, and I'll get into that a little bit more later on. But I want to talk about one of the comments I just received uh, today, actually. And it was from one of my uh, followers named uh, Joshua Sevdi. And uh, he was commenting about uh, the theory that has been posited by uh, my anonymous source with regard to these uh, alien beings, you know, evolving from insects and uh, possibly colonizing the planet and they feed on blood. And I've talked about this theory uh, a number of times on here. To me, it makes a lot of sense, uh, probably more sense than a lot of the, a lot of the other theories I've heard. But anyway, he provided a comment here, uh, Mr. Sevdi, and uh, I'm going to read some of this comment. Um, it says here, Say the theory is correct, the blood-sucking space ants theory. If they do, in fact, have a hierarchical uh, structure with the mantids, tall grays, short grays, etc., what if there is a warrior caste we have, to, we have yet to see, waiting in stasis on cigar ships on the dark side of the moon? Big uh, effers with forearms, muscles, pincers, acid, and venom ducts. Uh, I'll get into more of the comment after that. Well, I guess that's possible. I mean, it, it means maybe there's a beings out there that are actually above the praying mantis and or ants or whatever people, whatever you want to call them. Uh, there could be. Uh, there could be some beings that are uh, that we haven't ever seen yet. I mean, that are out there waiting in the dark. You know, waiting in the darkness to. Uh, you know, maybe they're the ones who, uh, in the final analysis, take uh, control. And all these other ones are working for them, and we just don't know it. Now, whether they're they're big and monstrous looking like described here, we, we don't know. I mean, it could be. And, I mean, anything's possible. I mean, the, the whole point, the, the, everything that I talk about here on this podcast is, you know, all of it's speculation. All of it, that's all we can do, really. I mean, what else can we do? You can only speculate. The only thing I don't speculate on is the fact, is is one thing, is that, and that, you know, I firmly know, I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I know that there's a presence here. And I think a lot of other people who follow this podcast think the same way, or they wouldn't be following this podcast. I mean, it's just, you know, you know, some I'm sure some people. I mean, there there are a lot of people who have commented on here had their own experiences, so they know. You know, it's like you, if you you know when you see one of these craft, I mean, you just know it, right? So, uh, you know, I just want to make this clear. I, you know, I'm just trying to make clear here that you know I you know everything beyond that is speculation. But the fact is, there's something here, folks. There's no question. I mean, I've seen one of their craft and one of those beings. Some one of their beings were it was in my room. I talk about that all the time. I feel like a broken record, actually. And I'll probably keep talking about it all the time because it's, you know, it was a significant thing that happened in my life. It's just it's the memories of, of these events, you know, that happened. There were basically three things that happened, but the first two I talk about the most. The third one is so strange, I don't even know what to think about it. I, I think it wasn't involving aliens. That was the, you know, when I, when I was living in Hawaii and a dog disappeared, and I talked about that a number of times, too. Uh, but those first two incidents that I experienced, I mean, there's no question in my mind that, uh, you know, that w when I was a kid, there was a being in my room that had three fingers, uh, three digits, that's it, on its hand. And they, they didn't look like human digits either. And, uh, and of course, the, the object that I saw along with another witness in 1994. So... You know, with that out of the way, yeah, I, I, I'm, I know there's something here, but beyond that, everything is all speculation. Of course, of course, there could be something above the praying mantises. All right, there's no question about it. Um, I'm going to read the rest of this uh, quote uh, because the uh, rest of this comment because there's some other interesting things that he said here. Um, he said he points out, wasn't there a story recently about some astronomers who thought they might have found a Dyson sphere around some star? What if that is their armada? Um, so, okay, uh, now, uh, for those who uh, are unaware, there's there's this thing called uh, some, you know, it's all pure speculation. There was something that was, uh, uh, 
you know, speculated it was uh, uh, the late Freeman Dyson. And this guy, he was a physicist and mathematician who put forth this theory that uh, an advanced civilization would utilize the powers of a sun, you know, by they could, you know, build a sphere around a, a sun and, and basically use that to uh, harness the energy of the sun. And, uh, and what the... Uh, what uh, Mr. Sebdi is talking about here, there was a few years ago, there was a star that uh, science, scientists were looking at, astronomers were, were looking at that was blinking, you know, it was blinking a lot and they didn't understand it. And one of the theories put forth was that it could be, um, maybe there's a Dyson sphere around it or actually more precisely, not, not just, uh, actually something called a Dyson swarm, which is a variation of a Dyson sphere. Uh, basically a Dyson sw uh, swarm would be a, uh, uh, according to Wikipedia here, it's the variant closest to Dyson's original conception. It consists of a large number of independent constructs, usually solar power satellites and space habitats, orbiting in a dense formation around the star. This construction approaches ha uh, pr approach has advantages. Components could be sized appropriately and can be constructed incrementally. So basically, it would be like a, a series of solar panels basically somehow strung together around a sun that basically and somehow the uh, uh, an alien race could utilize the energy from a star that way so that was the one of the theories that was put forth and actually actually there was some, some articles about this and i'm going to read here's an article that was uh, published in uh, back in 2019 in space.com i'm going to read some of this alien megastructure star may not be so special after all now before i start reading this i just want to get back to the comment uh from Mr. Sebdi. Now he's saying that, you know, what if that's an armada? Well, I don't know about that. I mean, but it could be, you know, it, this could be a place where these things are coming from because I mean, it, you know, the a Dyson sphere or a Dyson swarm, the hypothesis behind those is that, you know, they're drawing energy, you know, the, the alien uh, races are using these uh, mega structures for, you know, to draw energy from a star. So I, I don't see how that, you know, that wouldn't be, uh, you know that a Dyson sphere wouldn't be an armada, but uh, I mean they could be coming from this place. I mean this star, but I want to read this article a little bit, and we'll we'll talk about it then. Um, it states a mysterious star whose repeated bouts of darkening might be due to alien megastructures, according to some researchers' conjectures, may now have more than a dozen counterparts that display similarly mystifying behavior, a new study finds. Further research into all of these stars might help solve the puzzle of their bewildering flickering, the study's author said. In 2015, scientists noticed unusual fluctuations in the light from a star named KIC 8462852, or, uh, by the way, that, that that's also called, known as Tabby Star or... Uh, uh, there's another name for it. I don't know. I think they. I think they talk about it up here. Uh, actually, uh, Boyajian star. Uh, we're gonna call it Tabby star from here on out, even if the article calls it something else. Tabby star is a lot easier to say. Anyway, the otherwise normal F-type star, which is slightly larger and hotter than Earth's sun, sits around 1,480 light years from Earth in the constellation Cygnus. When the researchers anal analyzed data from NASA's Kepler Space Telescope, astronomer Tabitha Tabby Boyajian, then at Yale University, and her colleagues found dozens of odd instances of Tabby star dimming by up to 22%, with such dips lasting anywhere from a few days to a week. These events did not appear to follow any pattern and seemed far too substantial to be caused by planets or dust crossing the star's face. These analyses of Tabby's star raised the possibility that astronomers had detected signs of intelligent alien life. Specifically, researchers have suggested that the star is surrounded by a Dyson sphere, a hypothetical megastructure that is built around a star to capture as much of its light as possible. Mathematician and physicist Freeman Dyson suggested that such megastructures could help power an advanced civilization. Science fiction often depicts Dyson spheres as solid shells around stars, but the megastructures also could be globular swarms of giant solar panels. The megastructure hypothesis is near the bottom of most astronomers' lists these days when it comes to 
tabby star. However, further analysis have pointed to more prosaic explanations such as clouds of dust or comet fragments. Still, scientists have not yet nailed down the precise cause of the odd dimming. The answer remains elusive in part because Tabby Star seemed unique. There, is, there were no known counterparts to provide additional clues that might help researchers solve the cosmic mystery. Now, there's, there's a lot more to this article, but I will leave the link for you. I'm not going to read the whole thing. But they haven't figured it out yet. They don't know. I mean, a lot of scientists, there's a lot of prosaic uh, explanations for it. I mean, if you go to Wikipedia, they talk about all the uh, prosaic information, uh, explanations for it. You know, could be just natural, could be clouds, you know. Uh, rocks, meteors, you know, things like that uh, that are causing the dimming effect. Uh, but who knows? We don't know. But, I mean, the bottom line is this. The idea of a Dyson sphere or a Dyson swarm or whatever variation you want to talk about, uh, you know, it's, I mean, it makes sense. I mean, uh, you know, you would think, you would hope, you know, humankind at some point has, you know, is basically utilizing the power of the sun for everything. I mean, that would make more sense. And this way, we wouldn't be destroying the planet and, you know, with, uh, <laughs> you know, why you keep continuing using fossil fuels, for, you know, if we were using the sun directly somehow, if we, if we ever could reach a point technologically where we could construct something like this. Well, it makes sense. Again, we don't really know, though. Uh, but, you know, getting back to the comment here, you know, it's, uh, he goes on here. I'm going to read the rest of his comment. It says, uh, he's, what we, earlier, he, uh, he, uh, Mr. Sevdi said, well, what if that is their armada? What if it's nothing, I guess? If it is, we're most likely done for. Hopefully we have some low-key benefactor out there looking out for us. Maybe the hive is known throughout the galaxy. Maybe they've they've done this to other worlds. Like interdimensional roaches, they hide in another dimension and then infest the world. Hopefully some galactic exterminators are on the job. It could be. I mean, we there could be. I mean, there have been all... There, there's been other kinds of beings reported other than the greys and the, you know, and the, uh, tall greys and... You know, there's, and also the, uh, the the insectoids. There's been other things that have been reported. I mean, some people talk about reptilians, but are they in on it with the insects? I mean, we just don't know. And then there were the things like, uh, like every now and then you you hear about a case where the beings com look completely different than what you've heard before, like uh, uh, the beings that abducted uh, uh, Calvin Parker and and. Uh, uh, Charles Hickson back in 1973 in Pascagoula, Mississippi, they would, it was actually looked like these robots with, with very strange looking robots that floated out of a flying saucer and dragged those two guys on board uh, and then examined them and then let them go. Uh, you know, what were they? You know, what, you know were they, who were they working for? I mean, what was that all about? You know, so there's a lot of, could be, there could be just some beings that are just passing by and just stop here and examine us and, and ch you know, ex check check out the planet for a little bit and then and then leave. Oh, you look back in the 50s, uh, the Kentucky Goblin Spree. I mean, there was a story, there was multiple witnesses, I think more than 10 witnesses. I know I did a podcast about this before, where these, you know, strange looking goblin-like things showed up and they were basically floating around a, a farmhouse in Kentucky and, and uh, the people, some of the people in the house were shooting at these things and it had no effect on them. Uh, when, when they would shoot them, uh, the bullet would bounce off them and make a sound like a, uh, like, a, like a bullet hitting a bucket, right? You know, the cops were called, police were brought into the scene. There was, you know, everyone was all frazzled. I mean, every, they all stuck by their story for the rest of their lives, right? I mean, why were they making it up? I mean, what was that all about? Uh, so there's all different. There's been all different sorts of creatures that have been reported. I mean, Travis Walton uh, during his event, he saw the this, this short apparent gray beings, but then later on, he he walked into, a, into another room in the spaceship, and uh, he saw, you know, these uh, tall human-looking figures. He said you they you would they would pass on the street as humans. They did not talk to him. They just looked at him and. You know, and it didn't say anything to them. You know, now some people say that these Nordics, these Nordic-looking cracks. You know, there's all different theories about that. We don't know the answer. Are these Nordics? Are they uh, the uh, result of the hybridization program, possibly? Or some people say that uh, they're they're actual alien beings, uh, maybe reptilians. According to some abductees, that like this is some sort of a mask, a, a holographic image that's uh, you know basically hiding the features of what's actually a reptilian type of a creature. We, we just don't know what's going on. 
But there are things here, and whether there are, hopefully, uh, you know, like uh, like it says here, like uh, the possibility, like uh, Mr. Sevdi says that, you know, hopefully you would think that uh, these beings are, you know, there are other beings that might be looking out for us, you would hope, maybe. I, who knows? I mean, or maybe they're powerless. Maybe the greys are, are more powerful and have more uh, more advanced technology than what these other visitors might have. Who knows what's going on? We don't know. We just don't know. All of it's speculation. All we can say, right? And I, I know a lot of people out there, there are a lot of people out there, debunkers and deniers, and they, they, they don't want to accept this, right? Uh, but the one thing that is certain... There, there is an extraterrestrial presence here. There's a non-human presence here. That's one thing that's clear. Beyond that, we just don't know. Hopefully, you know, maybe our government has some more answers, but they probably don't know it all either. Um, and, you know, right now, actually, I feel like, uh, you know, a lot of the things I'm talking about, you know, the way I'm talking right now, it's, what's funny is, like, I, I think these thoughts, you know, I have these ideas and, you know, concepts in my mind a lot. And, you, you know, I was watching an interview just recently with uh, James Fox last night. It was uh, pointed out to me by some people. And uh, it was a very good interview. And uh, it was like a three-hour thing. I'll leave a link for it here in, in the description so you can check it out for yourself. But the way he's ta he's talking the same way I'm thinking. You know, it's like there's a lot of people right now, it seems like we're all starting to, you know, you know, it, it's starting to happen, I think. I think people are starting to open their minds, open their eyes to this and realize that, yes, there's something here, but we have to agree that we just don't know. We don't understand it. There is something here. We need to admit at least that part. Uh, there is definitely something here and we need to, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm happy with the way things are going on that front. Now, of course, there are people out there, the, the negativists, uh, like Stanton Friedman used to like to call them, who uh, just want, can want to fight this, keep fighting it. And, and it's just so foolish on their behalf. It really is so foolish. I mean, uh, it's like, uh, I know for a fact, you know, I know for a fact I've seen things i've seen these things i've experienced them and so when you see these people just trying to find you know bend themselves into twits uh, pretzels to try to come up with excuses just to placate the the scaredy cats that can't deal with this reality that needed it. it's just very sad